This is a short video about Nixie tubes, should you like the idea of using one or more in your next project for a retro look. Nixie tubes were invented in the middle 1950s, long before the LED in the 7 segment LED display. Downside of using them in a project today is that they need a high voltage of well over 100 volts to function. A Nixie tube is similar in makeup to a neon bulb in that it is a cold cathode device with no separate heater like a valve or tube if you prefer this term. The internal construction consists of multiple specially shaped cathodes, such as a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., which are surrounded by a mesh type anode. This assembly is mounted in an evacuated glass housing with some neon and argon gases. Like a neon bulb, the Nixie tube first needs a high striking voltage, but will then stay illuminated at a lower voltage than this. While small neons should strike at well under 100 volts, the Nixie usually needs a little bit higher than that. Here we see three examples of neon bulbs, each having two electrodes, though none is actually designated as being the anode or the cathode. The reasoning behind this is that neon bulbs are generally used with AC voltage sources, so this is irrelevant. If using a neon on a DC voltage supply, it's possible to see that the glow or discharge occurs only around the cathode, i.e. the electrode that just happens to be connected to the negative supply rail. When designing a circuit to use these devices, it's recommended that the displays are used in a time-sharing manner by connecting all the cathodes from multiple tubes in parallel with the anode strobe sequentially. This is because of an effect called cathode poisoning will cause the lesser used cathodes to deteriorate and lesser accessed occasionally during the cycle. As valve users may already know, this effect will also cause emission deterioration if the valve is run for an extended period with the heater glowing but no HT on the anode. Note in this circuit, the resistors have to be chosen to give an equal brightness for each of the digits or symbols. The suggested resistor values here should work with most Nixie tubes. The Nixie tube shown here is in fact an ITT device, which contains not only numbers from 0 to 9, but also two decimal points, one to the left and one to the right of the digits. In early days of TTL, ICs were available to interface with cold cathode tubes to computer circuitry using devices such as the 7441 and the 74141, the one you see here. And However, unless you're buying one to replace a failed unit in a piece of existing equipment with Nixie tubes, I personally think it's much easier and cheaper to buy a handful of MPSA 42 high voltage transistors for experimenting with instead. In order to test one of the Nixie tubes I have here, I decided to use a dozen MJE340 transistors instead, as I already had quite a few of them. Transistors are a very easy way to interface to a Nixie tube, but you do need quite a few of them and they have to be rated at quite a high voltage. Here we have a little demonstration unit to show a Nixie tube running through all its digits one at a time. This looks like probably a bit of overkill with this massive board at the back with all the wires, but all it's doing is simply scrolling through the 12 lines one after the other and then going back to the beginning again. Uh, I had this in the loft I'm going to use for another project but, and it has 40 uh, parallel out and 40 parallel in so I thought well I can use the 12 of those. Um, obviously if you're going to use a microcontroller or a pick or something then you'll probably find that has enough lines anyway. But a standard 8-bit processor you would need um, a couple of I.O. chips to do it, so I thought, well, this, this is ready built, I'll use that. Um, this is the board, if we have a little look at the board on there. Uh, not a lot to say about it, I mean, obviously you have the tube itself, there's about 24 resistors on it, and the 12 driver transistors for the 10 digits and the two decimal points. Don't forget, there are high voltages on this, don't touch it. Um, yeah, one should always remember to be careful with things like that. There is a current limiting resistor in this line anyway here um, but fortunately nothing goes this way so so behind it on the computer there is there are no high voltages at all so just try and keep them next to the tube here and then be careful not to go anywhere and touch it just exercise a little caution. So there we go that's about all we can say about Nixie tubes it shows they are easy to use but there are a few little things you have to think about to make them work properly. Thanks for watching.